Good morning. Thank you. Um, I want to say that yesterday I did write two policies. One was for $240 AP in a trailer, and the other one was for 5532 AP in a mansion. So, you know, we're going from one extreme to the other. <laughs> um, to be honest, I've been working with the larger one for a little while. I did put him in a whole life about a month or so ago, um, put him in a $40,000 whole life with trans and it was like an over $2,200 premium. But I had been working with her, her, his, her, his, hus, his wife, been wanting, um, I talked to you about this a couple of different times, finally did put him in a whole life, but I couldn't do the term. He, she wanted 600000 in term because that's what she currently has, and they have a really large house that they moved into, and she wanted to make sure that if something happens to her husband, she doesn't have any income, that she would be able to continue to live like she was for a little while until she was able to sell the house. So she was pretty adamant about wanting $600,000, and that was incredibly hard to get because he had a heart attack three years ago, and he had four stents put in. Evidently, two stents are okay, four stents is significant. So doing a lot of risk assessments, calling all the different carriers, the best table I can get for him would be like a table four. Some of them would like a table eight, an H. Never even heard of table H. So it's just incredibly high for $600,000 with that type of table rating. It's going to be like over $700. They try to convince her to come down to 350000 with that table. It may wind up being a better table rating depending on when they pull his records and see that he's been doing really great since. No, no issues. He's only on high blood pressure medicine. Anyway, she did finally give me a call back last week said that they decided to go with the 350000 knowing that it very well could be a table four rating. That's still $461 a month at a table four rating. So um, we're going to see how it goes. You know, I was able, she did have quite a few agents in and out there, and I was the one that was able to put him in a whole life and then able to do the 350000 for the term, you know. So it was a long time coming, but I'm the agent over all of them that was able to pull it out. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>
one that I didn't sell. This lady was 86 years old. Uh, even though I had to convince her she was 86, she really thought she was 85. I was like, ma'am, you're born in 1931. You're 86. She's like, no, 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 I'm 85. I'm going to be turning 86. I'm like, no, no, I'm sorry. I hate to burst your bubble, but you're 86. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have done that before. When you get ages, never just ask them what their age is. Always ask what year they're born because sometimes people don't know. All right? Um, I made that mistake in the beginning a lot. And so when we went and found out her policy, she had a mass mutual, and she had a $5,000 loan from her $15,000 policy, right? And so being that she was so much older, I knew I could only write Aetna, and she was in pretty good shape. I could have just replaced it and said, what about the loan, and done. But I asked more questions about that mass mutual. She had it in the 90s, and it had dividends. And she was collecting $500 in dividends a year alone, and her interest on her loan was only $200. So when I was on the phone with Mass Mutual, I said, look, take that dividend and apply it to loan interest and loan balance, and that will get rid of her whole loan faster, and that way she can keep her insurance. And the guy said, well, let me try to see if I could do that. And he, uh, he goes on hold for 20 minutes. He comes back. He's like, no, that's a terrible idea. You want to keep the dividends going to extended term. That, that's why we have it there for. You don't want to change. It's going to hurt her. I was like, how is it going to hurt her? She's going to pay 9700 if she dies. It's not going to hurt her to take the dividend to put it to. You're just trying to keep it from getting down the loan. Stop it. Send us the paperwork, and, and we'll get that straightened out. And he's like, oh, okay, you're right. The guy had no idea what he was talking about. So after I get done, uh, quick, quick funny story, I get done with her, and she's like, oh, my God, thank you so much for the help. Next thing you know, she puts, tries to put her hand in my pocket. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? And I was what are you doing, Mary? And she's like, oh, I just, I just feel so bad you couldn't help me. Here, here's $10. I'm like, I don't want your $10. <laughs> I gave her back her 10 bucks, and she was just trying to give me money for helping her. And look, you know, I could have easily just put her in an Aetna and started her all new over, but being at 86, that doesn't make sense. Um, do the right thing for clients, do what's right for people. And I still made 4,900 even with not, you know, helping her. So I'm going to be ethical and do the thing, right thing and you'll be, you'll be better off. So back to you, Tom. Morning. Good morning, Big Tone. Um, that's just an excellent talk too. I mean, it's, I think you you know, and I've come from a sports background, and so I think a lot of times when you come from that sports background or uh, played some activities or whatever those, even if it's not sports, whatever competition that you've been in, uh, we can carry that through. And you know what's kind of neat when you, you look at teams, whether it's in the NFL, the NHL, baseball, you know, the Yankees, whoever it would be, or football, the Buckeyes, <laughs> uh, when the teams have a – you come from a winning background, a championship background, or a, you know, almost like the pedigree, like if – and if your parents were winners or the teams that you played on were winners, or soccer, whatever it would be, uh, basketball, it almost like you just understand the mentality of what a champion is like. And I think a lot of times we don't – some people don't come from that background, and that's okay because we, when you get around the right culture, it can be contagious because you start doing the things that other champions are doing. You start hearing what other champions are doing and all the stuff Tony was just sharing really just part of what is on our, in our secret sauce of our championship team, our championship dynasty here. And so as you guys come on board and you keep learning this and, and whether or not you came from a championship background or not, at your former employer, your former job or your, your school, your college or wherever you came from, um, it it definitely helps if you've come from a championship mentality, but even if you haven't, um, and and that's been suppressed like a, a something deep down inside you because I think we were all born to be winners and not this participation trophy type winners, the kind where you put in hard effort, put in hard work, you put in you coach, you get you get coached, you get better, and that type of championship heart um, can be harnessed out of us that we were born with and born to have. So. Just want to kind of add that tone. Sorry, uh, get on a tangent there. I love but, it. Um, That's good. The, the, um, we're building this team here. Like I said, we're Derek Jones is is really wanting to get all Western Ohio and over into Indianapolis. Um, so we want to get some folks, and he's really rounded out nicely. Hit the the folks that we're going to have in Dayton. Dayton's going to have a. We are going to own Dayton, Ohio, without a doubt. You know, between Derek and and the folks that we that that Ashton's coming on board and Joey and Chrissy um, and then Chris, even Christina. 
we are going to have Dayton crush. There's not going to be another agent want to even come into Dayton because we are going to own it. Um, we're talking to some people over in Indianapolis. Um, Derek's taking a couple of folks around. I've taken a couple of folks around. Um, and then Cincinnati, we're really branching in. Um, and so those are the areas we're going to, we're going to really just have some folks. And like I said, I've been, today I've got another host of just interview calls where I'm talking to some folks, trying to find those right people. We don't want to just hire anybody. We want to find the folks, like I said, if, that we believe that we can harness that championship uh, mentality out of. So I'm really excited about that. And um, like I said, the new folks that are, hopefully we can get through all this, the contract and everything through this crazy coronavirus thing. It's, oh my goodness. Um, but Ashton was able to get through her test. She found out, I liked Ashton just pushing through and all the testing centers in the entire state were closed and she pushed through and she found one that was third party run. And she's like, wait a second, these guys aren't shut down. And uh, so by the skin of her teeth, she got in this third party and passed her test and, and everything. So great job, Ashton. I'm proud of you, and I'm really excited about you getting rolling as well. Um, one yeah, just a, uh, just a great day yesterday. Um, very long day, to be honest with you. Um, and, uh, but, you know, just got through it and uh, made some deals and, and uh, you know, just living the dream. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, to kind of reiterate a lot of what you talked about today, Tone, was, uh, um, you know, it was exactly what, uh, you know, what I dealt with yesterday. Um, you know, great talk this morning. And, and uh, but, you know, I guess I'll start off with, uh, you know, with our lead platform. Um, you know, uh, the leads are the, are the livelihood, you know, of our business. Um, and, you know, without the lead, like you said, the lead just gives you an opportunity to be at the door. Um, you know, without the leads, you know, that, that's not possible. So, you know, can't say enough about, you know, the great leads that we, that we are able to, to obtain, um, you know, and, and, you know, something else you talked about this morning, you know, we, uh, we stay strong when the economy is in a disarray, you know, I mean, we're, we are, I, I truly believe we are recession proof. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, when, when the economy is, is where it's at today, I mean, people need our services. Um, you know, just like they need to eat food. I mean, it's uh, it's it's something that they need, um, and uh, and I, I'm just I'm so blessed um, to to be a part of, you know, of this, uh, um, you know, to be a part of NSC and and uh, you know to to be, uh, I guess, just grateful um, that I don't have to worry about you know not having a job. I got a lot of friends right now that are been laid off and and. Uh, you know, have been actually starting to ask me a lot of questions, um, you know, as far as what I do and, you know, am I laid off and, and stuff like that. So it's, a, you know, it, it's a great way to, you know, to, to get your name out there too and, and to spread, you know, spread the, the knowledge and the news on, on what we do, you know, even from a recruiting standpoint. So, um, you know, the, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about today, um, you know, about the, the, the natural sales resistance uh, or, yeah, the natural sales resistance um, and yeah, I, I definitely had this happen to me yesterday. Um, you know, the fear of being sold, um, you know, the, I, I got in, you know, to the house that I made the two big sales on, um, and, you know, knocked at the door and, you know, she was a little reluctant on, you know, letting me in. And, and I just said, you know, I'll just be just a couple of minutes, just need to go over, you know, get you the information here. And she's like, oh, okay, we'll just come on in. And, uh, you know, so that, that's obviously the first hurdle. And, uh, um, you know, once I got into the door, um, you know, she, uh, you know, she said, uh, you know, I'm not buying nothing today. I'm just, you know, I just wanted to know what all this was about and, and all that. And, uh, so I, you know, I was told her, I said, you know, I'm just, I'm the, the benefits coordinator for the whole greater Dayton area. And, you know, I'm just here to, to go over the information that you requested. And, you know, and, and I always tell people, um, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything. Um, you know, I'm just here to go over obviously the information that you requested and review the programs and, and, uh, you know, just see if we may be able to help you out, you know, 50% of the people we can help, 50% we can't, and we're okay with that. Um, and usually that brings down a lot of, a lot of barriers and a lot of walls. Um, you know, and, and I had, I had that yesterday, you know, she said, uh, you know, she's like, I'm not buying anything. And, you know, she's like, I had another rep come in here, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, you know, just tried to, you know, cream what they were selling me down my throat. And, and you know, she said, I, I told him that, you know, I, I never buy anything. I, I always, you know, meditate on it for a couple of days and, and, 
And, you know, she said the more she thought about it and the more the, the agent was, you know, just trying to, you know, pout, like I said, just cram it down her throat, you know, the more she just, she didn't feel good about it. Um, so, you know, she was giving me examples, you know, as to, you know, what not to do uh, when, you know, when sitting there trying to talk to her and, and trying to sell her. Um, and uh, so, you know, so, again, I just reiterated, you know, what I was doing, um, you know, went through the presentation, um, you know, really built good rapport with her. Um, you know, she, you know, told me, you know, numerous amount of times that she had no money. Um, and, you know, the other, the other agent that was in there was trying to get money out of her. And, and, uh, you know, I told her, I said, you know, you never give us any money. Uh, we never collect any money or anything of that nature. And, and, you know, like you said, Tony, that was, uh, that, that brings down a lot of walls. And, uh, you know, so once, you know, once we got into the presentation, uh, you know, she, she knew, you know, a little bit about, you know, about insurance. And so I did a little bit of educating, which I love to do. Um, and, you know, by the time that I get through with my educating part of my presentation, you know, they're just like, man, I just, I got to have what you have. And um, so, you know, just really play that up. Um, but as far as my, uh, um, you know, my two deals yesterday that I got, um, you know, I had a lady, um, super, super fantastic lady. Um, you know, she, uh, you know, kind of our typical client. Um, you know, she was telling me, you know, some of the medications she was on, and uh, you know, she was super healthy. And you know, I, I was going to get her, try to get her approved under mutual Omaha. Um, and you know, by the time that we, you know, we were, um, you know, getting sing or getting signatures and autographs on the uh, um, on the uh, the application, you know, she had you know, forgot to tell me that, you know, she was on Eliquis, um, you know, that she took Nitro, you know, back several, several years ago, you know, but all this stuff would obviously um, get pulled up on the on the MIB report. And uh, so I had kind of had to steer in another direction. Um, and, and if there's, you know, a, a great piece of advice, and this is something, you know, that, that I do, you know, still to this day, is definitely utilize your manager. Uh, you know, to the folks that the new folks that are listening out there, definitely utilize your manager. Um, you know, because you know, I, I end up calling Tom. You know, just trying to get a little bit of guidance. You know, as to um, you know which which carrier to go through, and and uh, long and behold, try to get her uh, um, coverage with Foresters, and you know that that got shot down. Um, so you know, we just started. I called Tom back and. You know, we were just like, man, where where do we need to go? So we just started digging, and uh, um, so I ended up placing her um, over at Sentinel, uh, which was my first uh, application uh, that I placed with them. Um, so you know, just had to go through a little bit of a learning curve, um, but it was definitely going to uh, you know definitely meet her needs. And you know, she was she's like, man, I'm just I'm so glad. You know, she kept telling me, I'm so glad that you know you do what you do, and you know you have all these products to offer. And, uh, um, and it was just, you know, by the end of it, you know, she was thanking God that I was there. You know, she gave me her bank information, and, you know, she went from telling me that she's not being, not, you know, not being sold today, I'm not spending any money, I have no money, to, you know, she's spending almost $100 a month with me um, for coverage. So, um, and then, you know, right toward the end of, uh, end of our conversation, her daughter happens to walk in uh, with her granddaughter, too. And, you know, got to listen to a little bit about, um, you know, what, what, what I was doing. And, you know, and one of the things that, you know, I learned, you know, from Tom and Utone was, um, you know, when, when people start showing up, you know, and you're making a presentation, you know, don't be afraid to sell everybody that's in there. So, you know, so I, I really start doing a little bit more educating. And now I start getting a bunch of questions um, from, you know, her, uh, um, her daughter. And, you know, she said, you know, we, we lost, you know, a cousin here about six months ago, and it was just a tragic thing, and, you know, he had no coverage. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, 40, I'm, I'm only 45. I mean, is this – I know that, you know, this deals mostly with seniors, um, but, you know, get, can you help me out? Um, and I said, absolutely. I said, you know, we're – again, we're just looking to see if we can get you approved. And, and uh, you know, so – um, I was able to write her with, uh, you know, Mutual of Omaha under the graded policy um, or the graded program. And, uh, you know, she, uh, they just, they were all thanking me, um, loving on me. 
you know, after four and a half hours of being there, um, you know, it was just, it turned out to be a great day. So hopefully that helps some folks out there. Let me just share a couple things that's really been working. You know, we've, we've been saying stories always trump facts. Stories trump facts. And uh, a couple things that have, have been, I think, really building home. We've got to use the riders to our advantage. Some of the old things, again, don't have the riders we have. And uh, especially as we're, again, bringing home, you know, the points as when we're closing, you know, I think what we, uh, we've got to understand how important that the accelerated death benefit rider is and had a gentleman that had a, you know, a, a, a daughter, actually a stepdaughter, but just loves her like his own. And he is suffering from COPD and some of us have lung issues. We know how tough that is, how, how we feel the pain of that. And, you know, he wanted to have something when he passed away, but for him to know that whenever he got that 12 month to live thing, that he can go get that, you know, that cash. And, and I'm just talking about that time in life where he's going to be able to, you know, settle his own affairs. And, and I just talked about that time. I said, you know, you're going to be able to lie there, my friend. And you're going to be able to call her to your side and you're going to be able to hand her an envelope, you know, and this is the reason he wanted to do this. He, he's going to be able to personally, not after he passes away, personally hand her a check hand her some cash. I mean, that's at the heart and soul of why parents want to do this kind of thing. They want to cover their expenses, and if they can do something for the person they love, the grandchild they love, this is the kind of stuff where stories, not just of what have happened, but you paint a story for the future. And you got to just, you know, you just paint the picture. You got to use words so that you can see it, so that they can see it. And and that's exactly what I said to this man. You'll be you'll be lying there, and she'll be coming to your side, and you'll be handing her this envelope. And you know, and and and, and this is the man, by the way, Tony. That you know, we were you know kidding yesterday when when he said, you know, I got to talk to my daughter first. And I said to him, you know, um, uh, what, what I always say. I said, you know, I know what I said to my mom. Mom, you don't need to worry about this. That's what they're always going to say. We know that's what our kids are going to say. This isn't the decision that your kids make. This is the decision that we as our parents make because we know that's what we want to do. We want to protect them. We want to leave something for them. And so, you know, telling stories in that kind of way. In another house, uh, I remember very distinctly this week, you know, we talked about getting all the premium that's there. And a lot of times uh, you, you, you want to just find out, some, you know, especially if they're like the credit unions, a lot of people have, you know, just 10 or 11 or so bucks in an accidental, uh, you know, of course. And then, so this guy had 11 bucks a month for $100,000 in accidental. And we were replacing a universal where obviously she was getting more coverage. And so, you know, and we're trying to come up with every dollar we can to get as close in the whole life as she was getting in the universal because you can get more, you know, uh, for the premium because obviously they, they can get it cheaper. And, and so when I found that out, here's what I do all the time when, when people think, you know, I said, you know, uh, just here, do the math with me. If you're a company that's going to stay in business, let's just take $100,000 and let's divide it by uh, $11, first of all, and then you show how, you know, that, that would be how many months that they would have to pay $11 before this company would ever break even. And then I divide that by 12 to show how many years she was going to have to live for them, uh, for that company to uh, break even. She was going to have to live over 700 years for that company to pay out, to break even. Now, you say, how many companies are going to stay in business to know that people are going to have to live 700 years to pay out? The odds of them ever paying this out, you're going to die from an accident, and not just from an accident, but for directly from that accident. Can't be six months later from a staff infection in the hospital, directly from the accident. And, and the end of this benefit stops at a certain time. They won't let it go the rest of your life. A lot of people think it's for the rest of your life. Now, why don't we use that $11, add it to the premium here, and get you up close. So we got her within $2,500 of what she was on the universal life uh, you know, thing, and she, she was real happy. So using things like this, telling stories that will get you there, uh, you know, stories always trump um, uh, always trump uh, facts. And then just last thing I'll say, you know, uh, one of the sales yesterday, don't ever be afraid to go back to somebody that had something canceled, had a Transamerica policy cancel on me. So I, I drove back to them, found out somebody had messed with their bank account and they didn't know it. And so they ended up being, you know, Transamerica was having to charge them two or three months premium, uh, very easily rewrote them uh, with another company. And, you know, uh, because they just weren't able to afford the Transamerica, and that inevitably ended up in my favor, obviously, because we uh, got to you know, uh, start new, new policy. So don't be ever afraid 
to go back to you know folks and find out why they canceled. And that's one of the advantages of being in the business longer term. So hope some of that helps somebody. Yeah, you know, it's funny, activity really solves everything, and I think we heard a great talk yesterday from Walter about failing and, and uh, some other guys, but Walter really hit, hit home with, like, failing, and, and it's going to happen. You're going to go through a lot of no's before you get yeses. It's just part of sales in general. And, um, you know, last week's activity, bring this week's results, you know, when, when you're knocking on a lot of doors and see a lot of people, sometimes you don't close everybody you see, and it's just the way it is. Uh, we're not all Scott Griswold that have a 100% closing ratio. So when, when you're seeing people and not getting the results you want, you've got to see more people. And I had a stretch of about five for 22. I closed five out of 22 presentations. Terrible odds. I'm more, more like 55, 60%, but that wasn't. And so, you know, there's stuff you can't control, right? So someone had a Lincoln Heritage for seven years, and, uh, you know, she just had a heart attack and just got to the hospital. Like, I couldn't do anything about it. And you, you come across stuff like that, and, you know, so what I did was uh, I had a, a two different senior centers this week. One of them didn't go that well, and one went okay. Um, and last week I booked uh, some some appointments. And you know, when I book appointments, when I'm door knocking, and it's a quick tip for people, and they're they're trying to book appointments. And I know Carol's going to mention that later because she had like four appointments yesterday. Is um, when there's a one legger, I, I don't like nail down a time. I just ask when the other person's going to be home. So I'll say, uh, Mr. Johnson, is Miss Johnson out? No. Okay, when does she normally get home? Like after 4? Oh, she's, yeah, she, she gets home after she gets off the bus during the day. She gets home at 4 o'clock. Are you usually home at 4 too? Yeah, I am. Okay, great. I'll be back around then. So instead of trying to, you know, schedule an appointment with them and lock down a time, just find a time they're both home together at the same time and just come back. And I'm obsessed with my phone calendar, so what I'll do is right, at, right when I leave, I put in my calendar their name, I hit the location, and I set the time. And then, you know, I live by that calendar. If that time comes up, I know i got to be there, and I'll, 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 I'll be there for it. So a quick tip with door knocking and trying to see more people. Um, but my results yesterday was from the day before, I was at this lady's house. It was late. It was like 7 o'clock. We called Physicians Mutual, and um, they were closed. She had great health, went over the medicines. We went over her uh, situation. She mentioned she borrowed a lot of money for her policy. So I got there this morning, uh, yesterday morning. First thing we called them, and sure enough, she had a $10,000 plan, but it came down to about 20, 2500 or 2500 of a loan. So she had 7500 in coverage, and with interest and everything, it was close to about $95. So with Omaha, the same 95 would give her over 10000 in coverage, and all the cash she had left got refunded to her, which would be 1300 When I told her that, oh, she was so excited. You know, going from paying what she had and having less coverage to having more and getting 1300 in her pocket was like pure gold. She was ecstatic. She had a lot of bills that she had to pay for Christmas and everything. So it was a really good feeling to get somebody that, come up, that much money when they're on a really fixed income. More than what they make a month, they got that back in one day, which we're really excited about. Um, kept going throughout my day. I had a, uh, an appointment that I, I – one of the managers I did a, a senior center with a long time ago, um, we, we built a really good relationship, and she had a guy that come to her. Uh, he was looking for insurance, but he speaks Spanish only, and she speaks Spanish. So she was my translator, and he, he was really set on term because someone tried selling him term, and he didn't understand that uh, term is definitely not the way to go. So once we communicated that, that was a, a nice sale for 125 a month and came out to about – Pretty good day, 2600. So, uh, kick it back to you, Tom. Good morning, thank you. Um, I want to say that yesterday I did write two policies one was for $240 AP in a trailer, and the other one was for 5532 AP in a mansion. So, you know, we're going from one extreme to the other. <laughs> um, to be honest, I've been working with the larger one for a little while. I did put him in a whole life about a month or so ago, um, put him in a $40,000 whole life with trans. It was like an over $2,200 premium. But I had been working with her, her, his, her his, hus, his wife, been wanting, um, I talked to you about this a couple of different times, finally did put him in a whole life, but I couldn't do the term. 
he she wanted six hundred thousand in term because that's what she currently has, and they have a really large house that they moved into, and she wanted to make sure that if something happens to her husband, she doesn't have any income that she would be able to continue to live like she was for a little while until she was able to sell the house. So she was pretty adamant about wanting six hundred thousand dollars. And that was incredibly hard to get because he had a heart attack three years ago and he had four stents put in. Evidently, two stents are okay, four stents is significant. So doing a lot of risk assessments, calling all the different carriers, the best table I can get for him would be like a table four. Some of them would like a table eight, an H, never even heard of table H. So it's just incredibly high for $600,000 with that type of table rating, it's going to be like over $700. They try to convince her to come down to 350000 with that table. It may wind up being a better table rating depending on when they pull his records and see that he's been doing really great since. No, no issues. He's only on high blood pressure medicine. Anyway, she did finally give me a call back. Last week said that they decided to go with the 350000 knowing that it very well could be a table four rating. That's still $461 a month at a table four rating. So um, we're going to see how it goes. You know, I was able, she did have quite a few agents in and out there, and I was the one that was able to put him in a whole life and then able to do the 350000 for the term, you know, so it was a long time coming, but I'm the agent over all of them that was able to pull it out, so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>
So be persistent. You have to be in the door. You have, even if they're saying something, just know you can help them. You just got to get through that initial wave of objection. So I hope that helps. I know it wasn't a lot of detail, but you got to get in there. You have to do it, even if they have you convinced otherwise. Hey, good morning. Um, sorry, I feel like rushing this morning. Um, no, I think I probably did about eight or nine presentations. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> as far as one of the things that you just mentioned about giving us the, the good leads or whatever, actually, two weeks ago, I had gotten nothing off of my leads. I actually got a referral off of one that I went to see whose friend came and uh, got like $2,500 off of that. So uh, I was <laughs> I actually, that's, it's kind of just funny how that works out. But um, as far as going through my leads, they just, they weren't getting me a whole lot. But um, every week's a different week, and <clears throat> this week was a little bit different. So I went and um, had a delivery notice that I went back and saw the beginning of this week. Um, a sweet little older lady, she's about 82 years old. She lived by herself, immaculate, cute little house. And um, I went in, started talking to her, and we had some things in common. So we got, you know, really good rapport going. And um, come to find out, she had a couple of policies, and uh, I was like, you know, you know, I'd be happy to go over them with you, make sure they're good, you know, all that. And uh, not interested. Was not interested at all. Just was like, no, I really don't want to look at those. I don't want to get them out. Well, I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, great, you know, all right, we're about to be done here. You know, there's not much else I can do. She looked at me and she's like, well, what, what do you have, though? <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'd be happy to show you, you know, see what you, if you want a little extra coverage, I'd be happy to go over that with you. So, you know, I hate not seeing what she had, but, you know, if that's all I'm going to get, I'll take what I can get. Um, <clears throat> so I went over and wrote her up on a little policy uh, for, I think, an extra $5,000, and that worked out really well. She's a sweetheart. Um, then the next day I had um, Harry riding with me, and we actually um, ran into a gentleman who had a Lincoln Heritage policy. And I said, well, when did he come write this up for you? And he came back, like, November 30th. The guy came to his house and wrote him up, and unfortunately he's had a lot of issues. He had a motorcycle accident a few years ago, so he had a traumatic brain injury. Um, he has um, he's had some surgeries and, and things like that. So, um, you know, not the easiest person, you know, but I said, you know, we'd be happy. I have, you know, I have products that can cover you, and we'll take care of you and all that. And um, he hadn't heard back from the guy. We called Lincoln Heritage. They're like, it's still going to be like a week, week and a half until we come to a decision. I was like, holy cow. You know, I was like, we definitely can find something out way before that. So um, we're able to write him up. He said he possibly is interested in some more coverage um, <clears throat> within the next couple months when he, you know, works out his money and things like that. So we'll see where that goes. Um, but he was he was a sweet guy. And, um then later that day, Harry and I <clears throat> went out to see uh, a, the sister of a lady that I had written up, um, who she ended up being quite a challenge for me. I, the, actually, her sister, who I originally sat down with, you know, perfectly healthy, you know, in her uh, 69, I think, perfectly healthy. I'm like, yes, I love, you know, I love folks like you. Um, so sat with her and here. Um, we get halfway through the question. She says, oh, I was just diagnosed with, you know, hep C. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So, you know, worked through that. And um, <clears throat> she said that um, that she just was waiting to start the treatment because of her um, uh, medical insurance and everything. But that was it. And once it was done and she was treated, she'd be good. I actually had to go through and a couple different um, – you know, app processes to figure out who would take her. Um, but that was her sister a couple weeks ago. So I go back to see um, her sister on Tuesday, and she was um, perfectly healthy as well, except for cirrhosis. <laughs> so it was okay. We had to go through just maybe two different carriers, figured out, you know, what would take her and didn't have an issue, got her written up, which was awesome. Um, had to go back there a couple of times and be very persistent with, with getting her to sit down with me um, 
so that was that was a win. And then uh, by the end of the week, um, just kind of who I talked about on the call last week, I had a family that I ended up writing up at the very end of the day, struck out all day long. Um, I sat with a lady who was, she was quite cynical and didn't really want to um, go over anything. She just had bad things to say about everybody. So unfortunately, I didn't get anywhere with that presentation. But she... Um, um, but anyways, went to my appointment that evening and got it done, finished at 9.30 at night, and sometimes you just got to keep going. <laughs> Love it. Um, Natural-born salespeople, I think, sometimes naturally push through that, but the majority of folks aren't naturally born sales, and so the people that um, are agents, we need that training, especially when you're new, to, to get over a hump and just, man – Love that tone. And Derek, great case study. Um, yeah, and one thing I would say Derek does better than anybody else that we've ever worked with, any of our other managers, anyone that we've ever trained, um, Derek understands it's kind of a twofold thing. He really understands that, number one, go ahead and go through the role play if necessary. And if you sense that you need some extra credibility and trust, and of course, new agents, always call your manager. But Derek really understands that when there's a, that extra thing of there's, there's something that the client's not trusting or there's something not connecting and they need to see a bigger picture or they need another affirmation, and, and he'll call me and we'll just do the little role play um, that we've got scripted and we go through that and that gives Derek that extra credibility that he was just sensing he needed to grow with the client. Um, but the other thing that Derek does right in that is he's not afraid to call his manager twice. If, we, if he comes to a hurdle, um, he comes to a bump, um, and then he adapts – he does, he's, a, he's one cool cookie in the house, and so he adapts, and he doesn't let the client know if he gets frustrated. He doesn't let – if he gets rattled, you know, he, it might be a, a, a swirling sea underneath, but he doesn't let the client see that. And he's just got to pivot to a product he's never written before, a new product, something to get the client the right deal, make the, the commission, get the deal done, win-win for everybody. Um, so if you guys can model that and hear that from what Derek – I mean, just pivot it to – he wrote two products yesterday they'd never written before. And boom, I, I didn't see what the final numbers were, but made over two grand. So it's just like, stay cool. You get paid well. If you can maintain the storms, stay calm, act confident, and then continues to grow and build. So great job, Derek. I love it. So let me get a quick case study. I know we're running a long, but man, I just had to throw those props out there. Um, so if I were to title this case study, it would be um, – it would. I guess if I were to title this case study, it would be that I would call it the credit card replacement application. And what I mean by that, not to sound too windy with that, but you've got to find a way to, to, make, to find that money in the house, just like Tone was saying, whatever it is. And one we find, and you're going, to find, you're going to find this deal about once a month, maybe once every six weeks. If you can stay, and you're just staying creative, what it is is that by taking the cash value out of their existing policy, and replacing it or upgrading, as we use the word, and taking that cash value to pay off the credit card, which now frees up additional monthly premium. That's the tactic. That's the strategy. That's what we're looking for. So when you're in those houses, and let me back up, backpedal one step on this particular house. I had gotten over the last two and a half, maybe three years, four lead cards from the same lady that she keeps sending in. She, she, whatever reason, she can't stop herself from mailing these things in when she gets them in the mail. So if I've gotten four of them, I don't know how many she sent in with the other outfits. But she keeps sending them in. The first time I was there, and, and like I said, I don't think she even remembered me ever being there. I remember it because I'd driven by the house. I'd knocked on the door. I'd been on the porch. The first time, it was, she was like, oh, this is a bad time. Can we set an appointment? So I was on there. I just couldn't push my way into the, into the meeting that day. And we set an appointment for like the next day at 10 a.m. or something. I show up the next day. She's got a note on the door that says, sorry, Mr. Insurance man, I'm just not interested. Please don't come back. Don't knock on my door. So it's like, oh, my goodness. So the next time, I think the next card she sent, um, she turned me away. This is another six months later. Turned me away. Don't get in the door. She's like, nope, I already got my insurance plan. Just, I couldn't get through the, the door. The next time, this is about a month ago, she just did not ever answer the door. Couldn't catch her at home. So this time, the 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 main door was open, but the storm door was shut, and I just welcomed her out right on the porch and just turned right into the warm-up. So 
don't get discouraged when someone sends you these lead cards and it's the model one. I say this time and time again. Look at it as a challenge that if this person keeps sending this in, they are at some level interested, although they might be the, the typical whatever person that keeps mailing in things, hoping it's free. But push through. Get the mentality that if – and I say this, and I try not to say the word freak in or whatever, but my mentality is that if somebody sends me three, four lead cards, when I show up, they're buying a freaking policy. So just have that mentality versus, oh, not this joker again. And have the mentality they are buying a policy. So – so I had to share that. I'm sorry I'm going just a little bit long here. But anyway, this particular case study, as we pushed through, she had bought a policy maybe 10 years ago. She had a, a little bit of cash in it, and so I couldn't touch her rates. So the job I had to do was convince her she needed a little bit more coverage. And, of course, I, like I said, I couldn't touch her rates. And so even adding new, a new policy or even adding on if I wasn't going to replace that policy was so much more expensive. Um, because the 5000 she had, and I was going to do 5000 now, it was like double the price, you know, just for that extra five. So she would be paying, and it was going from like $30 a month to, I think it was going to, another 5000 was going to be like $60 a month. And so it was just literally double the price. And so what I did was I started asking around and say, hey, do you have any bills or any other credit cards? I always like to see if there's anything else that I can help some folks with or to be a little creative. And so I said, do you like some credit cards that, that perhaps you could be paying off or that you're, you're trying to get knocked out or this been burdening you, um, sometimes we can help folks with that. And so lo and behold, she did. She had two credit cards. One, she was paying, um, I think she was paying 250 a month on the one, but she owed like 7000 on it, so we weren't going to be able to touch that. And the other one she owed um, was closer to 1000 and she was paying 75 a month on. And so with that one, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Now our cash value can pay off that credit card. It frees up the $30 a month she was paying in premium. The $75 a month she was paying on that credit card, so now she's got $100 a month available. And so we, we found a number that worked out for her, and so we, we got her $7,500 to cover it, so we increased her coverage from the five she had to $7,500, and the premium was about 70, 75 bucks a month. So we got a spot where we took her premium from 30 to 75 I get paid on the whole 75, not just the increase because we're writing an entire policy. She's happy because we're saving her $25 a month on her monthly budget. She's going from a $100 a month outflow to a $75 a month outflow, and we paid off a credit card and freed her up of a burden that she was probably never going to get knocked out anyway. So it's a total win-win, and she's gotten more coverage. She's gone from 5000 of coverage to 7500 of coverage. And so it's a total win-win around the situation – and look for those deals. Like I said, I would call that the classic credit card payoff um, strategy. They're out there. Just as many of you have got credit card bills, many of our agents, a lot of our clients that we're coming across do as well. So look for these strategies. These people don't know that it's available. Set, us as, set ourselves above the rest by doing strategies like this. Thank you for your time. One case study that I want to talk about is an 85-year-old female that's turning 86 next month and had no insurance. I had already dropped in on her in December. She kind of pushed me off a little bit, knew she needed it, pushed me off. But we had bad freeze and snow in December, and the heater went out. She just, well, anyway, I made a phone call to her a week or two ago, told us she's running out of time. You know, we don't have Aetna here in Louisiana, so 85 is the the oldest that we were able to put someone in a policy. So anyway, she did call me this week. She knew she needed it, and um, I get there, we do the report and this and that, and she's still him hard and saying, I don't think I can afford that. You know, my kids have money and, and so on and so forth, and I just basically got direct with her, you know, I'm like, you don't have any more options, you know, this is, this is on you, you know, this is about, this is not about you, this is about your loved ones that you're going to leave behind, and she was talking about, you know, maybe looking at a funeral home plan, and I explained to her that, you know, what you do, life insurance, you know, it's immediate coverage, you pass away, um, your loved one's going to get that money right away, as opposed to funeral pay, plan, you know, expensive, they're going to add fees, and if she passes away, they're still going to owe the difference. And basically, she settled down, knew she needed it, and um, 
literally waited to the last minute to get insurance. She turns 86 in a couple of weeks. I put her with Transamerica because I do not lose commission that way. And she had COPD, so, you know, standard still first day coverage for 85-year-old female with COPD. That's it, basically. <laughs>